Thank you very much. Okay, folks, um, we are here for the second part of our two-part uh, painting that we started last week in gouache. Um, my name is Mike Southern. If you're here for the first time um, and you haven't started, you can just kind of dive in and, and try and catch up if there's anybody out there that's got uh, that situation. Um, but I am gonna sort of pick up where we left off from last week. Um, so quickly, I'll just go over the usual, uh, usual items here. Um, here's our supply list. Um, and once again, the colors are, are very flexible, whatever you've got. And also if you only have watercolors, that would probably work in a pinch. Uh, but today I'm actually gonna do a lot of opaque uh, additions to the painting that I started last week. So the gouache will be especially helpful uh, this week. Um, masking tape needs to be on watercolor paper, um, the usual stuff there. And this is what we started uh, working on last week. Uh, and it is a picture of San Francisco looking across towards Oakland and Berkeley. And um, it's, I think it's, can't remember from what exact spot in San Francisco it is, but um, it's definitely the Bay Area for sure. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna work on. So uh, if what I have done is I have, um, I basically got this picture on the side of my screen and I'm, I'm, I look at this while I'm doing it. So if you wanna take a screenshot of this and have a bigger picture, um, you, can, you can go ahead and do that. I'll just leave it on here for a few seconds. Um, so if you wanna do that, you, you can, it, it makes it a lot easier. Um, especially when we sort of get into the nitty gritty details. So feel free to do that. Um, let's see, from there, let's just pop over to here. So as you can see, I did, um, I did some more work after we uh, signed off last week. Um, I added a lot of shadow uh, into the street. Um, I added some darkness in here. Um, and, and did a lot of uh, line work in through the cityscape part. So um, I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you look at, you know, if you look at right in here, I did a lot of darkening here. I did a lot of this sort of scoping out the, uh, the city there. Um, and then over, over this side, I put in uh, some more darks in the tree to give it a little bit more uh, depth and richness to it. I did really essentially nothing in the background, uh, meaning the sort of the far hills, because I want to start there today. Um, so let me just get this right. There we go. So what I'm going to do first off is I am going to, I'm just going to show you how gouache um, really sort of ups the game of watercolor, so to speak. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've got a few spots up here. There's little sort of stray marks that I kind of want to get rid of. Um, so I'm going to cover them up and I'm just going to hone in on that, that area a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking kind of right along here. Um, in, in actual, you know, in actual practice, if this were a painting I were working on, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot up here, but I do want to show you um, how this works um, and how, uh, how best to kind of execute these ideas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some really heavy paint um, first to kind of cover these up, uh, to cover up these little sort of stray marks. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sort of uh, nice all-purpose round brush here. This is number six. Um, it's a round brush in that the, the bristles here are put in the ferrule. This is the ferrule. And they're and it's it's a it's a circle and they go in that like that. A flat brush is a little different in that you would have something like like that. So a flat brush is obviously different. For what I want to do, a round is perfect. So that's that's my choice there. So I'm going to mix up, I'm going to try and mix up this color here along the horizon. Um, and the way I'm going to start with that is I'm going to use some really heavy paint. Um, in order to go opaque, you have to use uh, a lot of pigment. So I'm sort of working this white here. 
Oh, I did want to show you something. I wanted to show you all the colors that are in the little kit that I'm using. This is uh, an artist loft kit. There we go. Come on, focus in for me. There we go. So I got titanium white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, vermilion, crimson red, pale green, viridian, cerulean blue, prussian blue, purple, burnt sienna, and lamp black. Um, that by no means is, uh, you know, you don't have to have all of those colors. I just want to let you know what I'm working with. So um, full disclosure there. So I'm taking, uh, taking this white and I'm going to take some of this yellow ochre and I'm going to take a little bit of this lighter blue and I'm just trying to match this over here to this up here. And inevitably it, it turns into a kind of a trial and error thing. So I, I may not get it right, but I think I'll get pretty close. So I'm just looking at that. And you know, a good thing you can do is you can kind of just take it and put it over there. And that, I mean, see how it just sort of blends right in? That's, that's pretty good. Doesn't match there. If we go up there, it's like camouflage. So I'm gonna try and see how this color works. So you can see that. Let me get you up a little bit closer, even. So obviously this color is slight. I think the color is right. Uh, meaning that if I just lighten this, it'll fit right in, but it is too dark. So to remedy that, that problem or that issue, it's not really a problem, it's just part of the process. I'm gonna put more white in, pretty straightforward. Mm. That's pretty much the right color now. And if I want, if it's, you know, cause I'm mixing the white, it's, it's basically mixing this dark in here. So I can just dab this dark out a little bit and then don't have to work against that so much. And so right here, that's a really good example of how gouache is um, a little bit more like a, um, acrylic paint. Still needs maybe a little bit whiter. It being the Bay Area, this could, I, I could also make the case that, like, oh, there's some clouds creeping over there from the valley. It usually comes from the other way, but oh well. I'm an artist, not a meteorologist. So there we go. A little bit whiter, maybe. I'm just getting a little, just really, really heavy amount of pigment here. So I can kind of just kind of feather it in there a little bit and make it look like some wispy cloud bank or something like that. That works for me. And I'm just going to finish it up here. So this, this is really where um, I, I think gouache has an advantage over watercolor um, in that you're just able to do more with it. You're able to get a little bit more opacity, meaning you can't see through it. And so you can cover up old passages um, that you don't, you know, that you need to kind of repair or whatever. So I'm just, and really defining that, that edge. All right, so that, that's kind of the way I'm gonna work with this. And so I'm gonna actually do a little bit more of this with, with this color in many ways, because if you look, if you look kind of up in the hills there, you can see, um, especially in you know areas like right along here. Ooh, I've, I've done it. Well, the, basically the how houses and stuff up in here. So I'm almost going to take the same exact color that I've got, this kind of this kind of whitish color, um, and maybe let's see what does it need. Maybe a little bit, maybe gray it up a little bit, make it not so bright and not so yellow. I'll take, oh, I'm already to sneeze. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay, so I've just put a little bit more um, sienna in it. So I'm making it a little bit grayer. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just, I see a little spot here where I could probably lay in um, 
the hints of, of houses. It needs to get a little lighter. So I'll take some more, take some more white again. There we go. And just try and sort of give it a little feel for a few and houses sitting up on side of the Berkeley Hills there. So that that's kind of that's kind of what I'm after today. It just adds a little a little sense of um, of detail of uh, you know sort of added visual interest if you're so inclined to work in a very detailed way. But let's let's get you up even closer there. There we go. I'll take some more of this white. It's real opaque white. You can see it. And remember, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them as I'm, as I'm working here. So this is part of it. And I can vary it. I mean, some are a little brighter than others. Some are a little lighter. Um, but the key here is I don't want these, you know, I don't want to take like straight white and come in here and be too heavy handed about it because it'll lose the sense of depth and, and atmosphere to it. Um, so I'm I'm really just trying to, sort of tread lightly here a little bit. Just give, give it a little sense of. Hey Mike, we have a question. Yeah, go for it. Can gouache be reactivated like watercolors? Uh, yep, it sure can. And um, I'm trying not to do that with this stage. By using it really heavy like this, um, it, it won't do it. But if I were to add more water to my brush, I could open, I could open it back up and, and really uh, sort of work reductively, like take some things out that maybe were not working or, or whatever, like you would do in watercolor. But yes, absolutely. Watercolor and gouache are very similar in the, in the way they feel and the way they paint. Um, the big difference being exactly what I'm doing here now. Uh, coming in with, with more opaque passages. Okay, so that gives you an idea of, of, of how that works. And, you know, that's something that you won't really see a whole lot um, in the finished product here. Oh, let's move that. Sorry. You get that so you can see what we're doing there. That's not so bad. Okay, so now we're, we're, back, to, uh, we're back to the wide view. So there's, there's a bunch of different things that I, I could do and um, I frankly want to do, but I'm gonna try and, and be as uh, strategic here as, um, as I can. And the first thing I wanted to show you is if you look down here in this corner, um, I've done a little uh, drawing. Um, if you look up in the corner there, right, actually right there where I'm pointing that little orange tower, um, that's what I've drawn over here. So I'm going to do uh, some uh, opaque passages on of this over here. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to do it in here as well. There's a few other spots that I'm going to come in um, and, and really, really work these, these heavy opaque passages. Um, so I want to, I want to concentrate on that for today mainly. And then when I've got time at the end, I'll just maybe just sort of do a scatter shot of, of different ideas. So over here, this little uh, this little tower, that little tower is is kind of an orange. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by mixing uh, mixing that up, and you can see what I've done here. If you get a little closer look, you get a little closer look at that drawing. I've just taken a pen, um, actually this exact pen. This is just a Stadler pigment liner. The most important thing here is if you can see it on there, it says, it says that it's waterproof on there. And that's really important because if it's not waterproof and I put paint on there, it'll, the, the black ink will bleed into it. And that is not a good look. So um, we're really uh, looking for pens that are waterproof, not water resistant, um, not water soluble for definitely don't want water soluble. You want something that's waterproof. Um, I did some experiments with this one and I put a few down 
And if I hadn't let it dry uh, enough, it will open back up because that ink is still wet. So it needs to dry. So this, this little drawing and all these other lines that I've put in through here in pen are all dry. They were done uh, like an hour or two ago. Um, so they're totally fine. It only takes about 10 minutes for them to dry fully. So it's not like you have to wait a, a ton of time, but you do need to wait. So make sure that you're using waterproof and that the ink itself is dry. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and mix the orange of that tower. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take a little bit of this yellow ochre, sort of an earthy yellow, not a bright lemon yellow like that one. Can you all see that? Nope, maybe I need to go out a little bit more. Let's do that. There we go. So while I'm mixing the color, I'll try and here, I can just move it. There we go. And move that down. There we go. So I've got a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And then I'm going to take some of this uh, stronger red. I'm just going to work with that for the time being. And this is this brings up another point. Um, a bright, really kind of saturated color like this. Um, and what I mean by saturated is it just means really powerful, like, you know, kind of potent as a color. You know, the colors I've got back here are not very saturated. They're what desaturated, more grays and washed out colors. In the foreground, um, I'm going to concentrate uh, on trying to get a few strong, intense passages of color. And that's a good way of pulling the foreground stuff into, you know, visually forward. And then this stuff, because it's kind of gray and washy, will move further back in space, which will sort of up the ante on the, uh, the illusionistic aspect of it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just try this color here. And let me see, I'm gonna go back to my big picture. All right, so I'm gonna go right in here. Now I've already got, I've already got, let me, let me get that a little bit closer for you. I've already got that uh, with some red on it. So we'll just, we'll just show you how it works. I sort of started in this area and I was like, eh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So now I'm, I'm, I'm basically covering up what I've already done in through here with this strong orange. And so now I'm almost treating it kind of like poster paint, like, you know, you did it, you do in crafts, uh, craft projects back in school. This isn't exactly the right color, but it's, it's pretty close. It's close enough for what we're doing. So now um, this sort of turns the corner a little bit. So this is more in light, in, in direct sunlight. So I'm actually gonna lighten that up by adding a little bit of white to it. Hey Mike, do these paints dry the same color as they look when applied or do they dry lighter or darker? They dry a little bit lighter. I mean, everything, everything in water media um, tends to dry a little bit lighter than when it first is put down. And that's just because of the, of the water on there. So um, like watercolor and gouache are similar in that way. Okay. And they also dry. Another thing about gouache that's a little different than watercolor is it, uh, it tends to dry a little bit more of a matte with a more of a matte finish. So sometimes watercolor has a little bit of a shiny, a sheen to it shiny surface, um, gouache, not so much. All right, this is actually a better color. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just take this, put it in here. And then this is sort of a little shadow. And then under here, is a little bit lighter. It's just gonna make this light. But you can see it's covering up that that red that I put in there previously, and that's that's really what I want it to happen. 
So yeah, that's looking better. And there's actually kind of a nice um, on this corner as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of continue around the corner there. There's a lot of other stuff that I need to put um, in this area, but for the time being, I'm just gonna kind of go with everything being this color. There's lots of kind of white window sills and these nice strong lines that I've got here from the pen are making it really easy to kind of keep track of where I am. You can be a lot, you know, there's, there's ways of being a lot looser with gouache, but I, I wanna kind of show you all the possibilities. I was sort of loose last week with the kind of the background stuff. This week, I'm trying to be a little bit more fussy. Okay, so we got that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the roof on. So I'm gonna get rid of that previous color and I'm going to mix up a much more intense. So I'll just bring us over here. There we go, there's my colors. Hopefully that's what you can see. Yeah, so I got my red and let's see, what else do I need? Maybe a little bit of brown to kind of, it's not so intense, intensely red. That's, that's pretty good. And then we'll go back over, just take a walk across the streets of San Francisco once again. Hey, Mike, quick question yeah. regarding the colors you're using. Um, yeah. What, what are the orange and brown one called? What is the orange and brown one called? Sorry. Okay, so br the brown would have been, uh, let's see, that's a burnt sienna. So burnt, the, the brown that I'm using is burnt sienna. And then the red would have been a crimson red. And then for the, uh, the, this area, I used some white and also used um, uh, yellow ochre. Those were the colors that I used for that. Okay, great. Yeah. So again, just kind of blocking in the main colors here. Is there a little, yeah, I'll just go with, maybe I'll, I think there's a little white trim all along the edge. So I'm really gonna try and push my look. So this kind of stuff that I'm doing right now is, is much harder to do with watercolors, simply because gouache is, it's got more pigment in it, it's heavier, it's less translucent, so more opaque. Um, and it has that, that nice thick quality to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this one to it. Steady hands, steady hands. Not quite steady enough, but it'll work. And if I wanted to make this lighter, there's two things I could do. I could treat it like a watercolor and just use more water to thin it out or I could add white to it. Oh, I got a little leak in there. That's all right. It's a, it's a, it's a rainy climate there in San Francisco. It, probably that paint is just leaking. That's what I'm gonna go with, my excuse. All right, now I'm just doing the, uh, the minaret, the top of the spire here, probably giving it a little more credit. All right, so this is kind of the, the, the application of what I just put on in here. This is kind of a um, sort of a halfway between an opaque and a transparent uh, passage. And I, I really notice how much thicker and how much more vibrant this, uh, you know, these gouache paints are than watercolor. So it's, the, you know, that's the big trade-off. Is, is getting the getting the sort of the nice middle ground between it being really 
transparent like watercolor and opaque like gouache and just sort of finding a nice middle ground. So that's a, that's a really good example. This is actually the same color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Well, I don't know if it is, but it, it is now. I think it is because they're all sort of a, it's a big complex of, of colors here. And you can see kind of through different areas here, I've, I've done a lot of um, sort of putting in some shadows. You can't really see it. Move, it, move it back a little bit. Yeah, some of these shadows. I sort of did some light passages in through here. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna let this dry. I'm gonna come back to this later, this, this whole red area. Um, but I want to just sort of tie some of this uh, together with what I did uh, last week. So meaning like in here, I did some shadows and I, I didn't quite draw it exactly right. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and fix that up. And a lot of this will be much heavier paint than I used last week. So I'm, I'm really gonna kind of commit to, uh, you know, making these a little bit more accurate. So I'm doing is I'm mixing up this blue, which is, uh, what would they call this one? This would be cerulean blue. This is the cerulean blue here. And this is my sh my shadow color. And I'm taking a little bit of uh, sienna. You can't see this, so I'll make it so you can. There we go. Lots of moving around today. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to make it so you can see everything. All right, so that's kind of a nice, uh, bluish gray, which is kind of what I'm after. So I'm just going to bring it over here and just kind of reiterate some of the shadow areas. Um, I redrew this, made this shadow a little bit bigger. So this is kind of in between. It's not fully, like when I put it on here, you can still see some of the white paper coming through. And what I'm going to try to do is this is, you know, people were asking about, can you reactivate it? This is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm kind of reactivating what I drew last week and trying to kind of integrate it into um, what I'm putting down now. I actually like this blue color better. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of ride that for a little while. I'm gonna use that in different areas. All right, so just gonna intensify these shadows a bit. And I like this color, as I mentioned, and I'm just gonna kind of carry it along the edge here a little bit. So defining a few city blocks here as I proceed down this alleyway or whatever it is. There we go. And so now I'm, I'm, now I'm just going to kind of look around for any shadow area that I had from last week and try and, you know, kind of up, up the uh, intensity of these shadows. And I think I'm just going to do the, the street right here, um, this one. And I like that, that color that I use. So I'm going to mix up some more of that. Maybe throw a little bit of red in there. So this is this is going to get a, uh, significantly darker now. I'm going to start in the foreground because that first mark you make when you load up your brush, brush like this, that's the one that's going to be darkest. Um, and again, foreground stuff, the stuff that you uh, you know read visually as as being right in the foreground is often the darkest elements, the most intense color elements um, of the painting. And so this is, you know, this is one of the closest areas uh, to us in, in the uh, illusionistic space that we're creating. So I'm really making a point of, of just kind of loading this up. And again, it's not fully opaque. I could probably make this darker if I wanted to. Um, but I don't want to. I want to I want to keep a, a tiny bit of opacity because if you look at the at the corner picture there, you know, you can still see stuff on the street. You can see the, sh you know, the shadow uh, passing over um, some cars and, you know, sort of a little bit of the detail that's, that's hiding in these shadows is, is still 
visible. So I don't want to go too heavy with that. Um, and I may even add, as I go up a little bit more, I'm going to add a little more water. So I'm just going to take this edge here, kind of draw it back in. So just darken, just layering now is, is kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, there we go. Got my little puddle of color, so it's nice and mixed, ready to go. Maybe add a little bit more water. Get a little bit more pigment in there and kind of go back and forth. There we go. So once again, and uh, you know, a, a little trick that I do is like, okay, that I know this is a little bit too dark. So any any area that needs more darkness, um, I'm just gonna kind of move around and like in the tree, this is really dark tree. I'm just gonna go ahead and and get rid of some of this because I don't want it that dark over there. So I'm, I'm just trying to get rid of a little bit of the pigment. And then I'll come back here with a little bit more water and just sort of finish up, you know, where I started. And that's a, that's a much better fit. If I'd have taken the color that I put over here and try to put it over here, it would read more like this. So I'm, I'm trying to be strategic in the way that I'm uh, using my color. So, I mean, I guess the point of that is when you mix up a color and it's not quite right, my first instinct is, all right, that's not where I want to use it. You know, that's not the right color for this area, but is there another area where I could use that and maybe just sort of lessen it a little bit? And that tree is very dark, very prominent. So I just went there and kind of took a pit stop and, and used, uh, used that a little bit more. Uh, for that for the heavy passages. All right, so now I'll just take this. I kind of like how this is broken up a little bit. And by broken up, I mean it's not it's not like one flat color. It's sort of a um, you know there's it's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit darker. it's you know it's got sort of a splotchy effect, I guess, for lack of a better word. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of work my way around a little bit. sort of reinvigorate some of these other shadow areas. Maybe right here, I'm leaving this area open like it's shining on a, a building that's this color, but this is the shadow area. So just kind of making it up a little bit as I go. But basing it on, on the stuff that I'm seeing from my source material, like, you know, if you, the more you look at something, the more you start to understand it, you know, because at first when I did this, I'm like, oh man, there's so much going on here. Um, but now that I've, you know, sort of had it in my sights for a little while, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. All right. So I'm, I'm kind of getting it, I guess I could say. Now these shadows back here are kind of off in the distance a little bit. So I'm not going to make them quite as dark. Go. So this is this is more of a washy, more kind of like a watercolor application that I'm doing here. More water, less pigment, more transparency, which tends to push things back in space a little bit. So moving it a little further away. Not much, but it is a difference. Uh, let's see here. It's a little shadow over here. I'll just throw that one in. Okay, and then another shadow up there. So now I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of spot checking. Like, all right, over there, I could use it a little bit. Maybe down through here. And you know all these lines that I had in through here. This that's basically what I did for about forty minutes after uh, we signed off last um, last week. Is I just went and kind of did a little definition and sort of blocked a few things in, just to give myself a little bit more 
to work with. And now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing more of the same. I mean, this, this is definitely, there's so much going on in this picture. You could, you know, you could make it, I could make this like five or six sessions of just going through and, and trying to define a few, uh, a few more areas um, as I got deeper into things, but alas, we are limited by time. Um, all right, what else? All right, I think I'll stop with that for now. I wanna sh shift gears kind of want to work on this area here and get this roof on. Um, so I'm going to go back into another uh, opaque passage and I'm going to make that one, I'm going to sort of emphasize the brown on that one. So I'm using, let's see, can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to use kind of the, yeah, let's just push this over a little bit, a little shift here. So not quite enough though. There we go. So I'm going to mix up. Uh, other way. There we go. Whoa. Earthquake. Appropriate enough for the subject matter, I suppose. All right. Um, burnt sienna. And I'm just going to mellow it out a little bit with um, yellow ochre. And maybe I'll add some white. I haven't quite decided yet. I want to get the color. Yeah, I think I'll just go with go with this. And really trying to thicken it up. So just taking burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit too much paint, but go. And then I'm just going to come right over top. And the green I originally, oops, you can't see it, can you? These are far more interesting when you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. So just really loading it up. Probably a little bit dark, but I could lighten it later. Or I could lighten it now. So if I did want to, if I did want to lighten this, and I, you know, I didn't want to, um, although I think it's actually fairly, fairly close. What I would do is I would clean my brush off, so get get all that root color off, and just take a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna put it in while it's wet like that, and I'm just gonna kind of tone it down a little bit. I'm just taking some white. Kind of wet into wet here. So it's just toning it down a little bit. And that's working quite nicely. You do not want to do this, you know, if this were wet, this would be a, a milky, disastrous mess. Um, so you got to wait, you got to wait for um, the paint to thicken up and dry to do something like wet into wet like this. The area that you want to change should be the only area that's wet. So I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth and just dragging that white in there. So that's that's the color I was looking for. That's that's a nice um, sort of strong uh, mid brown. It was a little bit dark before, and I, I think I've I've kind of resolved that. Okay, so let's see, where can we go from here? Let's go, um, let's go. There's so many places to go. Actually, I can just take some, I've got some of this blue left over. I just saw an area here, probably needs a little shadow here. So this is a little uh, grove of trees behind the big tree here. And uh, I've got sort of a lighter tone. And I'm just, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a shadow right over that stand of trees. And it kind of goes right into that tree a little bit, but that's fine. We'll just do that. Hey, Mike, we have a couple questions here. Yeah, what do we got? First, first Ali is asking if you can talk about the one perspective. About what perspective, I'm sorry? 
the one perspective. I'm not sure if that means the picture or the one point perspective. Is um, that what yes. Okay. It just says one perspective. So, Ali, if you would like to cl clarify that, that would be awesome. Um, but in the meantime, we have one from Joe. Um, my round brushes seem to fan out on the ends. Maybe I'm pressing yep. too hard. Or what uh, that think? could be. Um, I, with watercolor brushes, um, I think a really important thing to know is um, I rarely kind of go back and forth and brush it. You'll notice that I kind of just dab it like that. And that's, I mean, watercolor brushes are designed like capillary action to kind of suck up the water. And all you're doing is you're just transferring that water or the pigment that you have suspended in the water into your, onto your paper. So you don't, you don't really, it's not like acrylic where you're, you know, going like this. Um, you, it's much more kind of a dabbing into water uh, type application. So um, that's, you know, that's sort of a big revelation as far as, um, you know, understanding water media is you, you don't really want to paint in the traditional sense. It's, it's much more of a dabbing application. And that, that will save, uh, you know, that will sort of add some life to your, um, to your brushes too. So it's a win-win. All right, I'm just gonna add a few more. Let's see here. Here we go. It's gonna add a little bit of dark to this up here. I'm just kind of moving around. And this is, the, this is actually exactly the way I like to work. Um, I just wanna darken this a little bit, sort of set it off from the, the skyline there. It's a real nice, um, like cypress trees or whatever. I'm not sure what they are, but they're very distinctly Bay Area trees. And yeah. I'll put that there. And I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to move over to that big tree. Um, let's see if there's anything else over here. You know what I might do though, is I might just put a couple of, you know, like there's some uh, tones in here. Uh, and I'll go back to sort of the, the early stages um, when I was using more of a watercolor approach. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll mix, I'll just take some of this yellow ochre, but I'm, I'm really gonna just use it like I would a watercolor. So for instance, I'll just make, uh, let's just pick one out. I'll ma I make this building right here, um, just kind of a nice warm tone. Hopefully it's still dry. Yes, it is good. So it's not bleeding. I was looking at that shadow and kind of panicking a little bit, but it is dry. So I got lucky. So you can go back and forth between you know more kind of heavy uh, opaque passages and light passages, it doesn't have to be you know in a straight line. Uh, move move around a little bit. Give yourself uh, some leeway to um, skip through and and see what what needs to be done. There's a nice. Uh, little blue building in here. I want to maybe try that. Let's do this. All right. Yeah, this, this little building right here. So I'll just do this a nice kind of turquoise color. I'm just sort of painting the whole town, not the whole town red, but the whole town blue, yellow ochre. Is that, I guess that qualifies as a dad joke, wouldn't it? All right. There we go. So I'll just let that sit, and you know, so you can kind of just go around and, and so oh, there's a there's a there's a tan house, there's a sort of a pinkish house, and and it just kind of add add some spots of color um, as you're as you're working your way around. Now all of this here that I did in the foreground is is dry, um, so I, I want to go back to that. Um, let's see how much time we got. Oh yeah, we got plenty of time. Um, and add some details on top of this opaque uh, passage that 
um, I've already that I've already put down. I've sort of done the base coat. So now I'm going to um, switch my brush a little bit here, and I'm going to take a really small kind of fine point brush like this, and I'm going to add some details here. And I want to get really close to this again. So we'll just zoom right in. There we go. And do a little bit of literal window dressing. All right. There we go. Got to get it on my screen so I can see it, right? OK. So along here, there's, there's some uh, window, looks like some window panes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a real, a real strong white, almost straight white. And I'm just going to add these. First off, I'm going to add the trim along here. I start, I sort of hinted at it right here. And so once again, very opaque paint. I need a little bit more water though. It's not moving at all. So I'm just adding a little bit more water. I mean, this is the other difference. Um, like if you're comparing this to acrylics, um, acrylics, you could just sort of take the paint right out of the tube and start and start spreading it around. With gouache, you do have to activate it a little bit with water. But you see how it's kind of got that pebbly, pebbly little line. I'll get in there even closer. So adding a little bit more water. Try to get a little bit of flow to it. But I don't have quite the right amount of water, so a little bit more. So finding finding that balance. Now I added a significant amount more water. Let's this should work. Still being really pebbly. More water. If you're getting that where it's not coming off the brush, you don't have enough water. There we go. I think this should work. I've said that before though. There we go. That's more like it. So this is pretty much as thick as gouache can be. Anything more than this, and I'm probably um, not going to get the marks that I want. It's just not going to trans. It's not going to transfer. So now I'm just adding these. These window panes. There we go. Hey, Mike, we have a few more questions. Um, yeah. For starters, so Allie got back to us and it is about one point perspective. So could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there, there is, there's sort of two things perspective wise going on in this picture. Um, in the background, you had sort of the, you know, the gray hills and stuff. That's an example of atmospheric perspective where um, the sense of uh, uh, atmosphere, I guess, for lack of a better word, um, creates the depth. Um, and then as you get forward, you get those, you know, what we're doing here, these more sort of strong passages. Um, and then you've got something um, like this, which is, and, and this up here, and I don't know if you can see that one, but this one over here, these are all examples of one point perspective. And one point perspective is, is basically just sort of a, a mathematical formulation that in Western art anyway, uh, was developed during the Renaissance. And it, it gives the illusion of, of space. And, and the way it works is this line and this line are almost exactly parallel, but they're actually pinched in so that they get 
closer to each other through space. So out here, you know, this might be two centimeters, and then back here, it might be a centimeter and a half. Um, and then eventually, back in space, they'll meet at one point, thus the name. Um, so this picture has uh, quite a few examples of one point perspective throughout it with, with all those, you know, sort of geometric city blocks and things like that uh, kind of uh, working its way through the picture. Does that answer your question? I hope that's what you were looking for. But this one has definitely got one point perspective. Okay, yeah, I think so. Thank you so much. Great. Going over that. Um, a few other questions. Yeah. Where would one pen on this painting? Where would, I'm sorry, I, or, I must. Yeah, where this, does, no where is the where pen? Where exactly do you, yeah, or where do you where do you use it on the painting, and can you use it on top of the gouache paint? Yes, um, I did a little bit under, so you can okay. actually see like around here. That's that's a small. It's this pen. This is the pen that I'm using, and it's here, there, and I've sort of selectively used it. There's a lot of it right here. Um, this little little shack on top has got some uh, pens around it, but you can you can really use it anywhere you want. Um, okay. It's kind of up to you how you want to do it. I, I like to use in this particular one, I'm using it kind of sparingly. Um, so, but you know, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to, for instance, go into this tree and, and maybe add some, let's just do it. Let's just do a little, a little sort of adding of some texture in oh, here. Awesome. If I wanted to come in here and, and sort of beef that up and make that even darker with pen, you could do that. Um, you can use as little or as much as you want. Um, but the key here is of course, to make sure that either the paint is dry before you put it on or the ink is dry before you put um, uh, the, the, the ink is dry before you put the paint over top of it. So it, it's, a, it's a bit of a timing game, but it, it really, you can do it uh, either on top of or underneath of, um, it's really up to you. All Great. right, so what I did here is I just sort of added some window, window panes uh, a little bit quickly. This is not quite lined up, but I can, I can always fix that later. Um, so this, you know, I could continue, I'll do it with, I'll do it with this one here. I kind of want to make this edge nice and clean. So I'm gonna, that is not nice and clean. But once again, sort of taking this opaque white and doing a little uh, maintenance. I can just use it in here. I'm also, if you notice in here, um, I've got some pencil marks, just regular old graphite. Um, and I've, I've used both of them, uh, both a pen and a pencil. Um, but in a picture like this, you'd probably want to use the pencil more in the background areas um, and then the pen in the foreground. Pen is stronger. It's more, you know, it's got more impact. Um, it's darker. So um, you might want to, uh, you know, make that distinction. Hard, hard edge lines, um, darker passages, probably want to keep those in the foreground. And then, um, the lighter passages, like for the pencil and stuff like that, probably best to confine that in, more into the background where it's not going to be uh, too domineering uh, over things. All right, we're pretty much to the end here. We've got a few minutes left, actually. Um, so I thought I might, let me see what else, what else can I do here that's screaming for attention? Um, Maybe there is, a, there's actually one, one thing that I could do. There's many things I could do. But I, one thing I did want to do was, this is sort of cooler than the, the picture over there. So what I thought I might do is do some sort of more um, uh, light passages. And by that, I mean kind of more yellow uh, to kind of warm it up and to give it a little bit more variety. So I'm going to use a light opaque layer over a dark underpainting. 
And that's something I, I haven't really done here yet. So that's just one more thing that I wanted to, uh, to show you before we sign off and I'll do it, I'll do it fairly quickly. So for this, I'm just gonna take our old pal yellow ochre again and maybe green it up slightly. Just take a little bit of uh, that, um, I think they call it viridian. So something like that. And I do wanna make these fairly opaque. So I'm gonna really load the pigment up. So, you know, this is something where you, you've got to you've got to kind of get the color that you want um, correct. It's not one of like in watercolor you could probably sort of fudge it a little bit um, because it'll sort of mix together. But with gouache, because it's opaque, it's gonna it's gonna basically come in there and be that color and not really interact with anything. So you wanna you wanna get the color right if you're gonna do an opaque passage because it needs to integrate in there. Um, pretty well. So I'm just going to take some of this and just throw it over here. Maybe add a little sort of warmer passages. This is kind of the impressionistic or almost pointillist. You remember George Seurat, those French guys from the turn of the century back in the 1800s. Um, sort of build up a, a real mosaic of color here. It's kind of the approach I'm taking. I'm just adding it over top of it. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it yet, but just figured I'd try it. But you can definitely see how the yellow has kind of come in and, and, and overtaken uh, the green. I mean, there's a little bit of showing through, uh, but if this, again, if this were watercolor, um, this yellow would almost be lost in all of that dark green because of the transparency, the translucency of the color. So I'm, ge I'm getting more uh, of a, a dominant yellow by doing this. And it's kind of nice because you can kind of thread the, the needle. There's a little bit of transparency to it. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of taking advantage of it a little bit by some areas going a little thinner, some areas going a little darker. But that's another way you can use, um, use the, uh, the gouache in a way that you know might not be as effective as as if you were using watercolor, like over here where I'm doing it now, it's starting to lose a little bit of its pop, so it's a little bit um, more of kind of a 50-50 thing, like it's more of a glaze rather than a kind of a heavy passage. Like if you looked here, you can really see the yellow, and then up here it kind of gets a little lighter, and the overall effect is actually looking pretty good. Kind of like how that that feels. So I think that might be the thing that I end. I would end on. I'll, I'll just uh, you can kind of widen out and and see that a little bit. So maybe why don't we give a um, give a look at see what people have done and if they've had some success here with their gouache. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's switch over. All right. So do we uh, maybe have a few uh, people that would like to spotlight their work and, and give us a look into what they've been doing? Oh, yeah, yeah there we go. Allie, All right, spotlight. Allie, yeah, yeah. It's got a lot of nice color interactions in there. And you did the oh, nice, oh, yep, yes. yep, there okay. you go. Claudia, yeah, that looks great. And yeah, you really took advantage of that, of using that paint in a heavy way. That's that looks really good. Yep, nice. I'm yo, uh, that's right. And Ed, who is not Ed, that <laughs> looks great. And he yeah, really nice. Diaries. Oh, wow. So I like how so, a lot of people have sort of, you know, some people work much heavier and really took advantage of the uh, uh, the opaque qualities, and then some people were a little bit more washy with it. So it's a nice mix of approaches. Oh, James just blinked out there. Anybody else? Sarah, oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that looks great. That tree looks really good. There's a lot of nice variety in there. 
And uh, and there's Sarah. Yeah, that looks great. Kind of almost a, uh, what's his name? Wayne Tebow look, those really, really long roads. Do a little Google search of Wayne Tebow. You'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, cool. Anybody else? Is there any others? Or do we get them all? Cool. All right, folks. Well, that was great. I really, I really enjoy these kind of two parters because it allows me to kind of dig deep into it. Um, but next week, next week is November, um, and we are going to start uh, a whole month of watercolor and uh, not watercolor um, landscape painting, and we're going to do it in acrylics. And we're going to start uh, next week with a um, a kind of a master copy of a, an artist named Albert Bierstadt, who was part of the Hudson River School of Painters um, from around the turn of the century in the United States. Um, and I that, that picture is actually posted uh, as part of uh, the description. So you can sort of get a look at that. And if you want to kind of draw it out a little bit, we're going to be working on either canvas or whatever you can paint on with acrylic. So if you want to do a, a quick little sketch of that or, or take a peek at that. Um, that's what we'll be working on for next week. So um, landscape is coming up. Thanks so much for uh, taking part in our gouache. And um, I look forward to seeing some of you back next week. All right. Take care, everybody. And thanks again. Really appreciate it. See you later. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.